Welcome to the Brother Side Podcast. I'm Alex Pearson. I'm Justin Pearson. Today we have El Presidente Marty Cordero of the Omaha Storm Chasers, as well as the new soccer league, uh, Union Omaha. How's it going, Marty? Uh, Alex, great to be here. Really appreciate uh, being on with the brothers. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we kind of want to get into your background. So kind of let our listeners know who you are, where you came from. Wait, hold on. We got to talk about beer. We got to talk uh, about we, we always got to start with the beer. We always, oh, gotta, beer we first. St- we always beer start first. with the beer. Oh, okay. beer first. Yeah, beer first, then, you know, background. So know, later. today we're drinking Ale Storm okay. out of Nebraska Brewing. We are. And this is the home brew of the Storm Chasers. Yeah, it's our team beer. You know, we partnered with them back in 12 and 13 on this. On this. It first came out in draft. And then um, I guess it was summer of 14 uh, was when uh, we canned it. And you can see it here. You can get it locally at Hy-Vee. Uh, and other spots. Uh, This year's been a little bit more difficult to get because they produced less of it since there's no baseball. There's no chasers, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a little (laughs) while. Uh, But uh, um, Kim and Paul and and Tyson and everyone there, just they do a great job with their products. You know, they're based uh, over uh, off Harrison 108th is uh, Mm -hmm. their tasting room. And you know, it's it's a great beer. You know, it's a beer you can have two or three of with a hot dog and a bag of peanuts at Warner Park. Normally, while you're watching Chasers Ball, yeah. now you can yeah. do it while you're watching Union Omaha Soccer. Yeah. There you go. Do you have stockpiles of this at home? Uh, stockpiles, no, but I keep, <laughs> but I always have at least a six pack or two in there, but not not huge stockpiles now. Sure, it's good. I could have I could have some stockpiles of this. It's cool. easy to drink. I think and. My wife would probably drink it. Yeah. She's not super into the dark, real dark beers, yeah. so this is light enough for her for sure. Yeah. The tasting room is r- really close to my fire station. Is I'm it? Okay. I'm on the playing fire. Okay. And so, you know, w- my station's 108 in between Harrison and Giles, so really close to their tasting room. I always am envious when I see all the cars in the parking lot. And I'm just well, like, you've got oh. one of the best tasting places in the metro. Mm-hmm here and across the street one of the best smelling places in Rotellas. Rotellas. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. An- another great Chasers partner. When the wind is blowing oh. right out of the north, oh. it's, it's perfect. The smell of you, fresh it is. bread. The, sm- the smell of fresh bread is so hard. I, usually I, I fast in the morning. I'm morning fast. I don't eat till lunch, but if the wind's blowing right, it is hard. It is hard not to eat till lunch. Huh. Yeah. So, <laughs> got to drive by there. We're fantasizing <laughs> about bread. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and beer. Yeah, yeah, and, and beer. And beer. Beer and bread. Yeah. So, uh, Marty, you're from Louisiana. You don't have the Louisiana accent. Not at all. Not, not the down, 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 down. Hey, y'all. Where, what's up with that? <laughs> well, you know, being in sales, uh, I, I, I've joked over the years that I learned how to speak correctly after I left Louisiana in December of 98. Okay. Uh, and I think some of that goes through uh, when I started minor league baseball, I was selling group tickets. So I was selling locally there in Jackson, Tennessee, and the surrounding areas. I was working for the double-A team for the Chicago Cubs. That was 99. And when I moved into advertising and corporate sales, I started selling to agencies uh, that m- may manage um, Dodge or, you know, um, AT&T, you know, name the big national brands. So I would talk to agencies in L.A. or Minneapolis or Detroit. And I don't think that it was a conscious decision to learn how to speak correctly. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, was, it was simply through... Um, just just communicating and and being a little bit more you know not midwest not northeast not west coast not deep south but just talking speaking plus i have a music background uh Mm -hmm. so you know being in music and and visiting with folks from a young age uh but i i don't know i tell you when i when i do go back and 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 i spend three or four or five days and it comes comes back then well then i come back i don't really recognize it when i'm there but when I come back and I'll say something to someone on staff and s- instead of saying, did you eat lunch yet today? I'd say, did you eat lunch yet? You know, <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's a dramatic difference. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I do. I miss, uh, I miss family and food from Louisiana and not in that order. And, yeah. um, oh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I miss it. And there's a great spot here in town called uh, Acadian. Um, uh, there are off 114th and Dodge and they they I'm not sure if Acadian? the location is that what you said? Acadian yeah. Grill Acadian and I'm not Grill. sure if their location in Dundee is back open or not you know, it shut down for a while obviously due to due to what we've been dealing with this year but it's pretty authentic they Dan and his team do a great job and uh, 
I had gotten a, to about once a week, uh, and uh, I had it for the first time in about two or three months last week. Really? And uh, it's 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 really good stuff. Isn't good there stuff. a place downtown called Jazz? Used to be. They closed okay. down. They, uh, oh, I think yeah, right right after nice. the first of the year. I think they I think they shut down. It, it was okay. It was all right. It wasn't uh, authentic for you. It, it was okay. You know, there it, it was. It was very um, inconsistent if you will. Uh, yeah. And then Shucks is another place. They've got yeah, some good go po'boy sandwiches and yep. they have some things that are good, but across the menu in town, I think Acadian's probably the best. Yeah, we try to make po'boys po at the station. It's uh, panko shrimp from Costco, <laughs> some tomatoes, <laughs> lettuce, and some roumelade. Call it good, roumelade. Yep. And yeah, it's not authentic. But Bill Bowes lets you guys do that at yeah. the station? Yeah, <laughs> okay. oh yeah. All right. You know, Chief I know, Bowes. I know Bowes uh, yeah. quite well. He was at the ballpark last week for a meeting was with, he? with me. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we do our best. It's very basic level. We don't have like a good cook at my station. I mean, we, we try. We try hard. But well, you need to step it up then. I know, yeah. we do. There's some guys that like to cook. That's just it. There's some guys that are, we're fortunate enough that like are good at it, like to do it. We're at the crew I'm at now, which I love these guys. None of us are cooks, so it's just the way it is. So have you partied down in Louisiana for Mardi Gras? Have you been a part of that oh, scene? I, I, give, no, give us a of story. Of course he has. Give us a story. You, you can't live in Louisiana and not do Mardi Gras. Your not, best moment on what street is it? <laughs> Bourbon Street? Bourbon Street. Well, yeah, Bourbon, but you know, there's so many great places down there. But when I have been to Mardi Gras, I was playing music. So I wouldn't say that, yes, I really partied hard uh, on uh, during Mardi Gras on Bourbon Street, I was younger and I was playing drums uh, in a band called Stony Bridge, and so my time in and around there was was uh, yeah I have a couple of beers, but not not the extent of uh, do you remember what happened last night? Yeah, no, not not really. Come on, yeah. Marty. No, uh, no I, I haven't been there. there. I and went down there for a bachelor party and uh, never again. It wasn't Mardi Gras, though, was it? No, it's uh, the week before. But it's the always snow. it's always fun, you yeah. know. And I always say that New Orleans is a great place to visit would probably be a challenging place to live. You know, yeah. I, where I grew up was in North Louisiana, about five, five and a half hours north of New Orleans. So we grew up going to Dallas more often than we did going oh, to New seriously? Orleans. seriously? We did, yeah. We were right along I-20. We were about an hour east of Shreveport. Okay. Uh, so my early baseball was going to Texas Ranger games in Arlington, Texas. Was and, that your uh, team then growing up? It was my father's team. Uh, I couldn't <laughs> choose the team he, ch he, he cheered for. I don't know really? why. And then I couldn't cheer for the team that all my friends cheered for. That was the Atlanta Braves because they were on TBS. And they were yep. good. So I picked the Cubs. And I oh, thought oh, I was going to be Ryan, no. Sa Ryan Sandberg. You lost me. Yeah, you must be Cardinal fans. No, no. Royals. Royals. He's a diehard okay. Royals. Well, but we have yeah. something in common. Yeah, we, we do. both hate yeah. the Cardinals. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I double hate the Cardinals yeah. now that I've been with the Royals organization for so long. But, no, I grew up a Cup fan. Uh, not as diehard as I used to be because as long as I've been in the business now, 22, 23 years, it's become more about the people that I've met in the business and wanting to go on and see them succeed, whether they're in our staff, to go on to realize their dreams, or players that have come through the system to go into the big leagues, or other people that I've just worked with in the business for them to, you know, to, to realize their dreams. So I like the Cubs, but I don't love them like I used to, sure. and I really like the Royals where I really didn't follow them that much growing up, other than George Brett. Everybody right. knew who George Brett was. Well, mid-'80s were good to the Cubs. All right, to the Royals. Not Cubs. To the Royals. To the yeah. Royals. Yeah. Yeah. And then they disappeared for 20 years, maybe 30. It was tough. <laughs> yeah. It was a tough time. <laughs> yeah, it was a very tough time. But, yeah, George Brett, it was George Brett and, and nobody else, really. Well, you, you've kind of lived out your life with the Royals winning in 15? 2015. 15, yeah. then Chiefs last year. Yeah. I, For yeah. so long, he's watched his teams suck. Just be so horrible. But, you know, when football is different. When I grew up, I was like Cowboys when they were good, Packers when they were good. I just, you know, I didn't have an allegiance anywhere. And then I would say when I went to my first Chiefs game, that's when it changed for me, which yeah. I was I was older. like that in football as well. I grew up um, – I was a Cowboys fan because of my, my father's father. I was a huge Tom Landry fan and a Roger Staubach fan. And then – uh, I had uh, my uh, my aunt's husband's brother was David Woodley, and at the time he took the Dolphins to the Super Bowl mm -hmm. in '83, I think it was. He was the youngest quarterback to start uh, uh, a Super Bowl game, and then when he left, he went to the Steelers. So I kind of followed the Steelers, and then I really didn't follow football at the NFL level that long. And then Katrina happened, and mm -hmm. my father's always been a Saints fan, and my cousin um, went to work for the Saints. Uh, it was the summer before Katrina hit. And he ended up working with them until he passed away uh, two years ago last month. 
and um, uh, I became a Saints fan. You know, I, I, I w- it was kind of that, you know, it's time to support, you know, the, sure. the, the state that I grew up in yep. if I'm going to cheer at any point in time for an NFL team. And uh, I have to say, I, I wish I would have cheered for the Saints earlier on mm-hmm. because my father and I would have had a little bit more camaraderie earlier sure. on in my life. Yep. But, yeah, Katrina kind of put me over the edge that, you know what, I need to be cheering for this team. And, and I did. And then shortly thereafter, they got – they were good. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they well, were Drew Brees, man. Yeah. What a class act. That yeah. guy's a baller. It's hard not yeah. to hoot at nation and, like, they have such a strong support, you know, fan base, kind of like Nebraska. They do. I always bring stuff back yeah, to Nebraska. Yeah, always. I can't help always. It. But <clears throat> they have a strong fan base. Drew Brees, they're really good, have been good now for a, quite a while. They have been. I, well, they won the Super Bowl in, like, 09. 09. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah, they're. but this might be it. You know, from an NFL perspective, there's only so long that quarterbacks can last. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So and he's right there. It, Drew Brees it, it, is right this there. This might be it. Yeah. And what is he? Forty-two. It, yeah, I think he's, he's forty. Forty-one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think maybe forty-one. But you know, with COVID, it's good. Hopefully, they play. If they don't, you know, it could have. It, it would. It might be the ultimate what if season for an NFL franchise. No kidding. Uh, because he's. This this year or next year is probably his his last year. There, there's no way the NFL won't play. I, Too I, much money at stake. You wouldn't think so. The Saints made the announcement yesterday that they're going to play their opener without fans in the Superdome. And, and oh, I didn't hear that. You know, outdoor facilities versus indoor, and I could speak for days on that based on you know what we're doing at Warner Park and the right. things that I've learned. And Alex, yep. you and I spoke a little bit about that last Friday. Uh, but indoors is difficult, and that's why I think it's going to be extremely hard uh, to have any uh, college basketball, men or women. Uh, this this season coming no. up. I, I, no, I, I, I'm not listening. I, to you. I, because Let's end the you podcast. If you're not going to have college football outdoors right now, then you're 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 not going to have you're not going to have any indoor sport. Yeah. You're just not going to. And uh, that's why the NBA is already looking at they're already looking at a bubble system next year. But with like eight different locations, they would do it. Yeah. They're already looking at it for next year. Wow. Uh, so you know this is this is a uh, not just in sports, but throughout the entertainment, music theater local community plays and things like that it's and, and charitable organizations COVID's just decimated all of us just has i am extremely depressed right yeah now. that was that is that was hard we, to hear so we had, although it was insightful it was hard yeah, to hear we had a trip to march madness to las vegas this year this year yep. and you know everything was coming out early march and we're like all right we just need to get through just our a, weekend. Just needs to hang on two more weeks. And that was it. Yeah. yeah literally just literally boom, like, like one, one, yeah. one, one and a half week. Yep. And, and yeah, I remember we were talking earlier before we got on set. You know, it was March 11th. That was the Wednesday night. That's when the NBA stopped their games. And then everything else mm-hmm. started to domino after that because yeah. Creighton was the next morning. They yep. played the first half of their Big East game. And then they called Which it was odd. at halftime. They only played half. Well, what happened – I. I I, I don't know if this is public knowledge or not, but the athletic directors were actually meeting during the Creighton game. Okay. So they had not yet voted, and had they voted yes to keep playing, then the second half would have been played, but they wow. voted no, and it ended. There were just a couple of minutes left in the first half when they voted no, and they decided just to let – let the, the players, half play out. Let the half play out, and then that, that's, that, that's what happened. I was huh. curious about that yeah. till, yeah. till, that till really literally awkward. about 10 days ago I found that out. So I just really? – yeah. It was really bizarre. Like, you know – Just let them finish just, at this point. Yeah. It, we've already played a half. What's the next – But the thing but is, it wouldn't have mattered because the rest of the tournament was going to be canceled. It was. So you could play the game, and Creighton was going to lose that game anyway. Like, they were – not playing well. They were like down ten at halftime. Were they? Yeah, I, can't, it, I couldn't remember. But well, you know, they didn't have Marcus Zagorowski, and that was a huge, yeah, huge that would have been a big maker. loss. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that was weird. That was weird. But that's really interesting that they're having that vote at that time. But you don't think there's any logistical way to play indoor sports this winter? I'm not saying there's no way. Um, <laughs> just, <laughs> but just so kind of like ninety percent chance. It, if it's done, uh, you know, it probably is going to be without fans. And you have to think okay that. From, a, from, a, from a sports perspective and, and the things that we have seen in the research and studies is basketball is the sport uh, that gives uh, the highest risk, has the highest risk of transfer of disease and illness based on how the proximity. Soccer is so spread out. Even in football, you know, they could do face shields or a number of things that they've looked at from a football perspective. Baseball is spread out. Basketball, you're – Right up. Oh, yeah. For the, whole, the whole game. Yeah. 40 yeah. minutes, 48 minutes, whatever it might be. Um, so I'm not saying no, but it would be difficult with fans. 
and even without fans, there's there's some challenges. So I don't know how we got here. You asked me where I'm from. Yeah, but yeah. We're, well, we're talking well, about we're basketball. We just kind of That's diverge. Great. That's great. Um, yeah. So the Storm Chasers this year didn't have a season, and uh, what is that looking like for next year? I mean, what are the things that you guys are thinking about that we as fans don't know? You know. Yeah, you know, um, going back to late March, you know, we started looking at, okay, will we start June 1? Will we start July 1? You know, and once it got, once we got into June, we pretty much knew that it was going to be difficult for us to have a season. And June 30th, the season canceled. And that was um, primarily led by Major League Baseball and the Major League Club saying they weren't going to supply players to the minor league teams. Yep. Um, and it was because of COVID. But, you know, had they said, yes, we're going to supply teams, there were some conversations on, okay, if we minimize air travel and we do pod systems where it's just bus, because it could have been Nashville, Memphis, Iowa, and Omaha, for example, for a triple A pod, that could have happened for a month, month and a half, two months season, something like that. That didn't gain enough traction. So yes, it was canceled. Uh, the professional baseball agreement, which spells out between major league and minor league baseball, um, what we do for each other in our relationship expires on September 30th. So right now there is not an agreement for the 160 clubs that are part of minor league baseball to continue to be affiliated clubs for major league baseball, wow. that has to be flushed out first. Okay. And when that's flushed out, uh, then we'll get a 21 schedule and then we would, I would be able to better answer that. But some of the things that we're looking at now is re-envisioning our facility as it relates to physically taking out seats. Right now we have them zip tied. We're down from about 6,500 fixed seats to about 2,200 fixed seats is what we have right now in our seating bowl. Yeah, and just like blocking seats off. You yeah, know. they're all zip tied. They're these huge, big industrial zip ties, and they're blocked off because you know, you know we, someone's going to try oh, to yeah. them off. Uh, yeah, that's happened quite often. Yeah, and, 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 and the interesting <laughs> yeah, thing is you can't it, sit there. It happens more on the events we have two and three hundred people versus the events where we have had twenty four hundred people. Interesting. It, well, you got it, a couple hundred people think they can sit anywhere because nobody's there. It, it's human nature. Yeah. It's just human nature to be stupid. And, <laughs> and, 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 it, and it's true. It's, and, and, yeah, and it's yeah, true. true. And, it, and, and it, unfortunately, it's a sense of entitlement. And, uh, you know, so we're dealing with, with those things when we talk about trying to open up for basketball. Yeah. People are just inherently dumb, and that's why <laughs> that's why those of us hey, quote that yeah, quote like that, that. Th yeah, th those that. of us that 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 have to provide health and safety measures for people coming into our facilities, it's a challenge. So we're looking at that instead of zip tying. We're talking about physically taking seats out, physically making new rows, because if we were to do that, we think we can get more than the 2,200 seats because we would be able to. Uh, uh, structurally socially distance instead of just using zip ties right. and, and using uh, laminated signs and things like that so we think we could get closer to that 3,000 or 3,100 number and I tell you that to answer your question because that's what 21 is looking like for us right now and if right. we can plan that way and if there is a vaccine or if there are new safety measures new treatments for the virus that would make things where we can have more than that, those number of fans, then it will be easy to put the seats back in and not have to go through those measures. But if we don't plan for it, then we'll never have success. And right now in Nebraska, the, the recommendation by governor is 75% of capacity is what you can have in your outdoor facilities. Okay. So we're at 9,000 is our capacity. So that says 6,800 is the number we could have but there's this thing called social distancing that we also have to, have to adhere to. Right. So the 75% is just a baloney number. Yeah, it's something, it's not even and he it's, knew that when he said well, it, too. Had to. It, it's a, it, it is. Now, if you're talking about an outdoor uh, amphitheater or somewhere that doesn't have fixed seats in cement, um, then, then you could, if you have enough space, enough acreage, you could possibly spread out. You know, to be able to see, okay, 75% of what the fire marshal says and those numbers, but we can't. And we could have pushed those numbers, but we've chosen to not do that. We've chosen to be very safe because I'm worried about 21 and 22 and 23 years, right. not just August 21 and August yeah. 22 and August 23. I'm worried about numbers of years. Uh, you know, we're down from 30 staff members to around 10. Uh, that's oh, just geez. our organization. There are some other minor league clubs that are down from 40 to 6 and from 30 to 2, and some oh, that are down from 10 two, to 1. Two, yes. That's like a... 
It's like you it, and it, one and other the person. It, it would be. It would be. So Marty's running th- th- it all. This is uh, th- this is this has been quite difficult for again not just minor league baseball, but those are the things I can speak specifically right, to, right. As, and minor league soccer as well. But it's also about you know all of the entertainment in the sports world around the country. So if you're ha- if you have 2,200 people in the stands, can you still be profitable? Uh, depends on the night. Uh, depends on weather. It depends on uh, how long the gates are open. Those are thin uh, margins. They, yeah, they, they are. It depends wow. on, you know, for example, on August 1st, uh, we had 2,400. It was our inaugural Union Omaha game, uh, sold out. Hey, oh. And we had an <laughs> Yeah, hour. that was, I but, heard. But yeah. selling out at 2,400 is not selling out at 9,023. Hey, we're, we're, we're second in the league. But we'll take it. It's, we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll take it. And it's very encouraging. It, it is. But we had an hour and 15 minute lightning and rain delay. So, of course. you know, of course, right? Yeah. You know, we can't. It's well, 2020. It just keeps winning. It's 2020. Just, yeah, yeah, it's 2020. Just started Kobe Bryant. Kobe it, Bryant started this whole yeah. thing. No, it was Australian wildfires. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. what kicked it, it off. It was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to keep so, it straight. So, so an hour and a half adds, you know, you add how many thousands of dollars in labor from first aid, security, ticket takers, ushers, parking attendants, concession, the whole list. Yeah. So our margins are thin to start with. So it, that's why I say it depends. And, you know, are we doing a giveaway? Are we doing fireworks? And for the most part, we have rolled back and we're not doing those things from a cost perspective. Oh, yeah. And and for, to, to limit the spread, you know, if you're doing giveaway items, you don't really know, you know, who's transmitting what. So right. we've tried to really minimize that. And the USL and NASCAR are the two sports right now that are actually playing in front of fans. So we also are taking it very serious that we can make a statement in how we operate our facility and how we operate and be a model for other facilities and other entertainment venues, not only here in the metro and the state, but also around the country. I was on a call this morning with the USL and, you know, offering, look, we've done this. You know, we had 20, 2,400 for our 3rd of July fireworks. We had 2,400 for soccer. You know, we've had another 80 or 90 special events. Most of them have been in that 50 to 200, 50 to 300 person range. Sure. But we've been doing them and we've had no cases so far and you know i i I just i have to give it to our our facility manager steve farins and our 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 special events manager who is one of our assistant gms andrea bedore you know they've just been very uh regimented and how we do things and you know we now require masks for entry into the facility Mm -hmm. but we don't require them at your seat so if you feel comfortable enough in your seat to take your mask off to watch soccer or whatever else may be going on at the event you're at you can do that, but you know we made it so we're, we're kind of in between. You know, it's yeah. mandated to get in because we don't really know where everybody's coming from, and we made a determination to not temperature check 24, 2,500 people from a lines perspective because we also didn't want people backed up as yeah. they're coming through the gates because right. there again, that's congregation. So there's so many just what a logistical just, yeah, yeah, it, it, it is. is. It, it is so there's, much to think about. There is. There really is. And and we genuinely we care. We care about our fans. We care about our supporters. We care about the community. And if we do, we have to act like we do. We can't just say it. Right. Yeah. Well, and I was talking to Zach Zeiler, and uh, Zach Zeiler, who's that? Double yeah. Z. Z Square. Yeah. Double Z. Z Square. He's an employee of uh, the Storm Chasers, and mm. he was talking about what you guys have to do just for food. You know, everything has yeah. to be in a packet. Everything that's has to all be changed. handed to you. No more buffets and, you know, no more condiment carts. We went from uh, 75 to 80 food items, menu items, and we're down to a dozen and a half. You know, we have no, no draft uh, beer. Uh, it's all, you know, prepackaged uh, Budweiser bottles, cans. Same thing on the Pepsi side, you know, no, no, fountain, no fountain sodas, Ale Storm. It's, yeah. it's canned, it's packaged. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we've, we've really tried to minimize, you know, it's, it's basically hot dogs, hamburgers, things, items we can wrap, as well as, you know, uh, uh, fresh items like, like a, um, a chicken tenders basket or nachos, things like that, that aren't pulled pork nachos that have nachos and cheese and jalapenos and beef and then more jalapenos and more cheese and, you know, yeah. what spices. God, you're well, making me hungry. Well, yeah. I, it meets, <laughs> you're yes. making me not want yes. to go to the park. Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. But, you know, the more items, the more ingredients you have, the more opportunities there are for some type of contamination. contaminant. Right. Conti- absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That that's, is, that's just wild. So that's, that's my 2020. Yeah. There's, yeah. A, there's a lot of obstacles to overcome, challenges to face. Sounds like you guys are meeting 
Well, meeting and, a mark though. And, I mean, and we are, but to, we have to keep going though. Yeah. We, you know, we can't just rest on what we've done because those days have passed. We really have to continue to be vigilant. And, you know, and, and, and I wear a mask. I wear a mask. Uh, and, you know, that's a personal choice. I've been wearing a mask since this started. For me, it's for two reasons. One, to protect others. And then two, so we can have events. And so our economy can, can come back. And, you know, are there health concerns for wearing a mask too often? Maybe. Are there health concerns for not wearing a mask enough? Maybe. So I've kind of fallen in the middle of that. And I, I you know, I, I say that to people that I'm wearing it for the economy and they kind of laugh at me, but I, it's serious. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're the economy right now, as we talk in early August, that's not really open. You know, my boss yeah. is, is on a trip right now overseas in Europe and he's messaging me like everything's open and they haven't had cases in three weeks. And, you know, we, we have to care for one another a little bit more. Well, I, th I think we do. Entertainment per, is just my personal opinion. Entertainment is such a big aspect to the economy. I mean, oh, yeah. just the hit from the and mental health series was 80 million. To yeah, Omaha, right? but in mental health. I mean, you yeah. think about that's one reason why we have pushed so hard, even in a small sense. My staff is like, really, we're going to let 10 people at a time play catch on the field. Yeah, but that's 10 more people that are out of their house, 10, 10 more family members. And now teams, because teams can practice after June 1st, they were able to practice baseball, soccer, whatever. That mental health component, I mean, I, you know, I, I, my fam, in my family, both here and afar, you know, we, we struggle with mental health issues. And being cooped up in a house from March until who knows when, not healthy. Yep. From a social perspective, not healthy. No. Sure. So there is a mental health component to it as well. So on that note of mental health, health we're going to take a quick break here and thank our sponsors. We would like to thank Nebraska Brewing for providing the ever-refreshing Ale Storm, the official beer of the Omaha Storm Chasers. We would like to thank Code 99. Do you need a certification in CPR for work, school, or for medical practice? Call Code 99 at 402-618-9004 to get certified today. And we're back with the Brother Side Podcast with Marty Cordero. We were just mentioning mental health and how important that is during times of COVID. Um, I think all of us can speak when speak on the behalf of mental health and just you know being cooped up and you know trying to find things to do and the lack of entertainment is killing us. So, I mean, at least you have your soccer league going. We do. Yeah, yeah. USL is uh, uh, moving along. Uh, we um, uh, second place, you know, as we as we shoot this. Hopefully, how many games have been played so far? We've played three. Some okay. teams have played. I think one team's actually played five matches already. So it's a variety. It's eleven teams, so it's not a balanced schedule. Toronto sure. had to pull out, so there would have been twelve clubs, but there's eleven, and uh, we'll end up playing a sixteen game schedule, eight and eight, uh, and then the top two teams will play a one game championship on Halloween. If we're in first place, we'll host it at Warner Park. If we're in second place, we'll be on the road somewhere. And if we're in third place, then the season will be over and we'll start to wrap Warner Park up and close it for the winter time. So it's just a one game championship. It is, yeah. Usually the season runs from late March until early September. And then the playoffs run throughout September and the championship is the beginning of October. But because of COVID, we didn't get started till right at the end of July. Um, it, it just changed the the con, the the, con, you know, the 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 construct of the playoffs, right? And we all voted to have more guaranteed games versus unknown games sure. from a playoff perspective, which it makes more sense from a gate perspective. I thought I checked the schedule. I thought you played four already, and there's two ties. Well, and that's uh, my other bone to pick. How can you tie in soccer? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, someone Tying someone has soccer. to win. Well, I, I, as we record this tomorrow night, we're playing on Wednesday. Uh, the 12th of August, we'll be playing in Chattanooga. So, okay. you know, we're not, we're not, we're not sure yet on, but there's uh, been a on what that result. Yeah, we tied one. I don't get it. Well, you know, I'm a baseball guy that's learning. Yeah. Uh, and if you tie on the road, it's as good as getting a win almost because in soccer you don't win on the road that often. So you want to go on the road and it's about getting a point. Okay. Uh, because for each tie you get one point. For each victory you get three points. And right. at the end of the year, the standings are really based on points. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's the way, so, that's the way yeah, soccer and that's is. How, that's yeah. how it's done in Europe, too. It is. Yeah. It is. I, no I no, no overtime. It. No shootouts. Uh, shootouts so, for the World Cup in 
you know, championship matches. That's, that's it. Yeah. That's it. That's, that's pretty it. much it. It's wow. and, not and there aren't playoffs anywhere other than uh, North America as well in soccer. In, in other parts of the country, uh, longstanding Europe, you mentioned, you know, it is just the standing. It's the table. It's actually yeah. that they call it a table the on table. soccer. And whoever's at the top, you, you win. That's, that's, that's the way it ends. There's no playoffs. So playoffs are uniquely American as it relates to, to soccer. And I'm, this is all things I've learned. This so is, you're not a giant soccer player. Uh, uh, well, I'm not a giant anyway. Well, but you uh, weren't a giant soccer player because <laughs> it took you a couple. Of, you, it took you a couple of years to bring it to Omaha. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was a process. Started about five years ago. Quite honestly, uh, our owner Gary Green, who's an, a fantastic guy. Um, Shout out to he, Gary. He, yeah, what he up, Gary? Uh, he uh, <laughs> he has adopted Omaha as his second city. Sweet. And the NBA was looking for an ownership group here in the Omaha area to run one of their AAA teams, the NBA mm-hmm. D League. D League. Now it's G the G League, League yeah, for yeah. sponsored uh-huh. by Gatorade. Yep. Yeah, you're up on it. Yeah. And so Seriously. we um, and we actually still have the territorial rights to that, uh, but we looked at Ralston Arena. We looked at Baxter when Baxter was still being built, and we negotiated uh, with both both buildings and knew where we were going to go. But during that time, the NBA and the owners decided they wanted to control their G League teams and not have independent operators like ourselves controlling them. So it ch- kind of changed the parameters around what the agreements were going to be. And we, we're not interested in being minority partners with anyone. Right. We want to we operate it. Yeah. You know, wouldn't have been a problem if they wanted to, if the NBA team, whether it be the Nuggets or the Bulls or the Timberwolves, those are some of the, the teams that we would have been, oh, been affiliated NBA, with. Yeah, we love the NBA. Yeah, and, 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 you know, I'm a Nuggets fan only because Paul Millsap plays for the Nuggets right now. He went to Louisiana Tech, but uh, just like well, I was that, a – That's such a random guy to be a fan of. Well, he went to well, Louisiana he went Tech. To, he went to yeah, his college. Oh, I know, but that, it's like yeah. – He's not that big of a name, though. Not yes, now. He, Paul no, Millsap is a name. When, now, when, when he mean, was in now. Atlanta, he was. Yeah. yeah. He had, oh, yeah. He, he was a go-to guy. Years. Yeah, because he left Utah. Uh, but anyway, I'm way off target here. <laughs> no. So that's, when, that's, that's, that's the part of podcasting. <laughs> that's typical. <laughs> We're all, all over but the But when, when that fell apart, uh, Gary started looking at other options, and there was a soccer league called the NASL, North American Soccer League, which folded about a year and a half ago. Gary looked at it, um, and he wasn't real comfortable with it. He, he, didn't, he didn't really believe in the financial uh, solvency of it. Well, he was right. And during the time that it was going under, the USL, which has been around for 20-plus years, reached out to us, and those conversations started about two and a half years ago. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we announced May of 2019 that we were bringing it. We announced our name October of 2019. And we hired Jay Mims, uh, who started the UNO program, took UNO to uh, national championship, uh, excuse me, national tournament, uh, won the Summit League championship, and they were top 10 ranking. Well, he went and worked for the MLS club in Salt Lake, Real Salt Lake. We hired him back, and he's put together the squad that's 2 0 and 1. Oh, we'll yeah. see. We'll Two see. Our, and yeah, and, and our next home match is uh, next Wednesday on August the nineteenth. There are limited tickets remaining for that. So, you know, by <laughs> so the time by the, the tickets. by the time this airs, hopefully that will be another victory. Yeah. How do you have any hair left? With with everything that's going on, you're managing two teams while well, you're the president of two teams through COVID. Yeah. And you, yeah. and you still got a good flow yeah. going. Yeah. Well, it, you know. It's, it's, it's I'm, jealous. I'm obviously. sure there's days where I you're like. It was more like yours, if you remember. At the, yeah. I don't know. We didn't really know each other before, but I just I let everything grow. I let, I let my hair grow. I let my beard grow. And I ended up shaving my beard on uh, um, my uh, anniversary on May the 5th. But I didn't get a haircut until sometime after uh, after July 1st. And it's time for another haircut. But uh yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how I still have hair. I guess good genes. Yeah, I don't no, know. If I mean, I would be pulling it out left and yeah. right with what you're going through this year. That's for sure. So, I kind of want to get back. You, we we're talking about mental health, and I gotta ask, like, how are the minor league players doing? Yeah, like, because they got just I mean, that's a great that's a great question. You know, um, most of the players that would have been in Omaha are in Kansas City. So each major league club has has their 60 players. It's called a 60 player pool. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's a 28-person active roster, and then there's 32 extra players. So the Royals taxi squad, if you will, obviously isn't here in Omaha. It's in Kansas City Mm -hmm. at the T-Bones. That's an independent league baseball facility, kind of like the Lincoln Salt Dogs. They're in the same league. Okay. So they're renting that out because they're not playing either. So most of the players that would have been here, they're there, and they're up and down, as they would have been from Omaha to Kansas City. But – the rookie ball guys, low A guys, high A guys, most of double A guys are not. Thank you. 
Gotcha. Uh, you know, they're, they're not playing. Um, and that's a great question. You know, not being involved day to day. Because um, ma- they don't make much money anyway. Well, what? they don't. Uh, the Royals were the very first team to come out and say, A, we're going to pay our players through the season, and B, we're not going to release any minor league players. And there That's were a cool. number of organizations before like the yeah. Royals did that, that that went ahead and started releasing players. Yeah. So they're paying players that were never, ever going to make the major leagues, meaning they were filler for this season. Plus, they're paying players – who are going to age out as well. But that's how Dayton Moore, that's how they do it. They treat people like people. Like and they, 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 it's not just about who's the most talented, and it is somewhat about family. And uh, I, I feel very confident that we're going to be, you know, we could sit here in two or three years and we could be talking about a club that's back in the playoffs and potentially winning a World Series by 22, 23, 24 again. And it's going to be awesome. Old statement right oh, there. I, no, I, I love it. No, I bring just, it on. I'm just like no, I'm, the table. No, I'm confident in that. I really am. I mean, their, their pitching depth in the minors is, is something that – you know, I'm not going to say it's it's like the Braves were back when we were talking earlier yeah. back, you know, at the 80s going into the 90s. I'm not going to say it's that rich. But their pitching talent depth and the fact that, for the most part, they're all developing and they have some underrated guys, guys that weren't top prospects that are also developing. When you can develop pitching, you can go out and trade for and you can sign hitting. It's very difficult to do that, to go out and get pitching. If you remember, that's what ultimately put the Royals over the oh, top yeah. when they traded Will Myers and some others to get James Shields and Wade Davis. And, yeah, it was great to get Shields here. But Davis, from a bullpen perspective, is really what put him over the oh. top with HDH, with, with, yes, with, with, with like Davis, her, Davis, you know, with Holland, <laughs> Davis, and Herrera. And um, I, I, I just I have confidence that we're going to be seeing that again soon does well, it mean they're going to win the world series no but do i think they're going to be competing for one absolutely well yeah That's it's awesome. absolutely pitching i mean we're get this is turning into a royal show but Just no when will i remember when will myers was traded away people were like oh he was supposed to be a big what? time future well, prospect one of the best prospects league, he was minor league player of the year in right. 12 when he played here in omaha for the storm chasers and three months after being named minor league player of the year he's traded in december so i yeah, I mean, there, there were a lot of – even us were like, oh, man, we're not going to get to see Will in Kansas City. Yeah. But it's worked out. Will has gone on to make, I don't know, $100 million or whatever his contract was with the San Diego Padres. It's worked out for him after he yep. went to Tampa and then got traded to San Diego. You know, it's, it's, it's worked out for a lot of folks. And, you know, and there are a lot – a lot of times we forget because we talk about the community, we talk about fireworks, we talk about all the fun things we do at the ballpark. But we forget sometimes to promote – the type of player or the the quality of players, but 75% of players that have played in Omaha for the Omaha AAA uh, franchise have gone on to play Major League Baseball. That's the so average in, the average in AAA is 71%. Why the difference? I think it's because Kansas it's City's a small. Well, it's, what, no, <laughs> you you, no. Marty, Can, Marty, you Kansas City's a small so market. Kansas City's small market, and they don't go after free agents like a lot of other clubs do. So they're promoting their players more. Here's one example. I was reading the other day. Will Smith. Uh, was a left-handed pitcher who pitched here, I guess it was 13 and 14. I can't remember exactly when. That's not the Will but Smith he, I know. He yeah, was no, the, different. different, <laughs> different. Uh, but he got traded in, in a small deal to the Angels. Ended up He ended up going to the Giants. Well, Will signed a three-year, $39 million deal with the Braves this, this past offseason to go pitch in Atlanta. So you have players like that. Those are the type of players we're seeing here. And mm-hmm. I think we can probably do a better job on reminding the community that it's not just about great family fun entertainment. It's also about seeing the top caliber athlete in the baseball world right here. Yeah. Right here at Warner Park. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's been some really good players that have come through the Royal system. Now, a lot of times Royals have been handicapped by financials that the Yankees have. You know, Royals are never going to be the Yankees, but they've definitely had some talent come absolutely. through their system. Absolutely. And so we haven't been able to pay some of the big contracts. You know, that's why Hosmer left and Moustakas isn't here and, you know, others. But – that doesn't mean that we don't have good players and it just takes the right blend, you know, and the right timing to make all that work. And it worked in 2014 was just as exciting as 2015. It was, I mean the, Oh man, that wild card game with the A's. I still, I was in new Orleans for that. (laughs) Yeah. I I was in new Orleans watching that game. Yeah. I remember that. It It was was incredible. It it was stolen bases. Oh gosh. that's getting pretty specific for this podcast <laughs> yeah, and these listeners, but Oh, what, a, 
what a time to be alive and be a Royals fan. Which, <laughs> yeah. it's not, you don't get to say that very no, much. You don't. But, you don't. But, but you're going to continue to. Yeah, That's exciting. I think so, it's, too. It's coming. There's good leadership, and it, you can see the direction they're going. Yeah, they're competitive and, this year. So, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah it's but good. you, I mean, you've been around. You've been, well, you were you with the organization when they were the Omaha Royals? I was, yeah. My first you oversaw the transition. I did. My first four years, I was actually brought here to, to move AAA baseball out of town. The previous ownership group, that's why they, they hired me. And, you know, figure out a deal, find out where we're going to be long term. We pretty much knew, it wasn't public yet, but we pretty much knew behind the scenes that Rosa Blatt was going to go away. The NCAA yeah. didn't want it anymore. They, so they kind of dictated, and plus the zoo kind of dictated what was going to happen. So we're kind of like, so much what, power. What, oh, what, yeah. what, are, what are we going to do? <laughs> Uh, so after my first year here, which was 07, then I was promoted to GM in fall of 07. And then it was figure out what we're going to do. And right. you know what? I screwed it up, and I kept it here in the metro. And hey, we well, got to deal, deal with Sarpy County. So yeah. so my first four years were the last four years at Rosenblatt. And, yeah. um, you know, now I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I can't say 10 seasons, but nine seasons, 10 years at Warner Park for Storm is Chasers it now. That long it is. This would have been our 10th season celebration. Yeah, we had all kinds of things planned this year. Yeah, it's, yeah. Fireworks Fridays were yep. going to be. Well, congrats. Out of this world. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Thank that's you. that's yeah. an accomplishment yeah. right there. Thank you. Cheers, that's to a cheers. Cheers. Hey, cheers to hey, that. Hey, no kidding. So let's let's take a break from the baseball for a minute. <laughs> you're in a, you're in a band. I the am. Drawing board. And I'm and I'm leaving here to go to, to band rehearsal tonight. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're playing August 27th out at Warner Park for. Uh, a band, one of our bands in Brews, um, but I am. It's a, it's three surgeons uh, that work for Nebraska Medicine, and they're w way smarter than I am. <laughs> three, three of me can't equal what the, the smarts of one of those guys. I'm just, I always joke, I'm just a dumb baseball guy. But I'm a drummer, and the the name of the group is called the Drawing Board, and we got together, I guess May of 2019. So we haven't we haven't played that many gigs because yeah. we were just getting going when all this hit, but. You know, we're, it's, it's, it's alternative rock, it's classic rock, it's stuff from the Beatles and the Stones all the way to Foo Fighters and, and, uh, and awesome. Tom Petty and all in between. So, Do you play any original material? Do you we guys don't. Have any? We've talked about doing some things, but honestly, we're only able to rehearse a couple times a month. You know, we, most of us uh, have families, uh, two of the four of us have kids, and, you know, and, 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 and quite frankly, we kind of shut it down when COVID started because no one really knew, but... You know, now it's funny. I'm behind this huge plexiglass drum, uh, drum divider because yeah. I play a little too hard and and loud. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, now it's kind of my natural barrier for COVID. It's my, I call it my COVID COVID <laughs> bear, COVID protector. And uh, but no, uh, hopefully we're gonna get started with some more gigs this fall. Yeah, you've seen Step Brothers, right? I have. It's no. one of my wife's favorite uh, Will Ferrell Nobody's movies. Nobody's put their nuts yeah. on their drum set yet. Uh, <laughs> not this drum set. <laughs> <laughs> Not this one, but it's happened. Do you play any other Different, instruments besides drums? I, I, I don't. No. I don't. I, I, I wish I could sing and play guitar. Those would be the two things that I, 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 I've always, would have always loved to do. I, I ruined my vocal cords in fourth and fifth grade yelling at sporting events, literally scarred them. And, uh, Seriously? Yes. Like years, that's a real oh, thing? yeah. Years, years, years ago. And, uh, and I'm, the guitar intimidates me. It's like, wow, how, how do people do that? So I'm just... I'm the guy who hangs out with musicians. I'm a drummer. You can look. You can look at a drum set and be pretty intimidated too, though. Like for a novice like us, yeah. who are musically challenged. Vocally well, you are. Challenged. Doing, hey, I play you are more doing four you. things I, at the same time, and then five if you're singing. So yeah, I. I, I yeah. play percussion. Sixth you grade. You did. You did play. Percussion. I was banging on that triangle left and right. Just <laughs> ting, ting, ting. <laughs> yeah, you. Beat no, the I tried. I tried the guitar uh, freshman year of college. I forgot. And about failed that. miserably. Well, you I, just I, was doing, I was doing the like, I'll play guitar, pick up chicks, that whole thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Who, Nothing <laughs> happened. I couldn't play the guitar, <laughs> and I didn't pick up chicks. So that was my experience with music. So with the band, you guys, you said you play um, alternative rock and classic rock. Is that your favorite kind of music? Is that, uh, or is know, that just like how the you know a as lot, a group? A, you, some of the bands that we play, I I do really enjoy. They're my favorites. I mean, I, I do like a variety of music. Um, you know, I would say just rock and roll in general. I like. Uh, I'm not a big metal guy. Uh, but I'm also probably not a big garage rock underground uh, guy, but kind of more center. 
you know, I'm not I'm not a country guy unless you want to go with Johnny Cash and Merle Haggard and Conway Twitty, and I call it yeah. I call it real country, not country pop. Sure. Uh, not not this yeah. stuff nowadays. Uh, but I'm a huge Johnny Cash guy, and you know, I like some jazz. And being from the South, from Louisiana, you know, I like some real old uh, blues music, not rhythm and blues, but blues with Slim Harpo and Muddy Waters. And so I, I like a variety. But you know what? I like Tool uh, just as much as I like mm -hmm. just as much as I like Foo Fighters and uh, and then there are some you know some some bluegrass and folk bands that I like as well so I like a variety you know I like a variety a variety of, mu of, of music awesome we need to get into uh, Star Wars <laughs> oh, I can't. Yeah. you said yeah, you, really? your anniversary is May fifth right it is and I thought like I thought May the fifth be with you and May, or, <laughs> no it's May the fourth it's May, May the fourth, fourth be, be with, with you, you. Well, yeah. it, went, it went through my an head. easy story yeah. to why May fifth because it was a Saturday in between homestands in 2001. That's why May the 5th happened. It okay. was either that or wait until the fall. So we chose to get married in the spring, took our honeymoon in the fall. So that's, that's why early. Those people yeah. are like, that's in the middle of baseball season. Yeah, yeah it is. It is, yeah. but that's why. And it wasn't, there was no Cinco de Mayo meaning to it, none of that. It was just a Saturday in between homestands. That's all it was. <laughs> but it's a very special Saturday oh, just just, in between yeah. homestands. Super Jeez, special. brownie points over yeah, here. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, no, uh, part of this podcast is talking about your other side, right? So you got a, a Star Wars, you're a Star Wars fanatic, right? No? no? Yeah. Yeah. I was just, like, oh, boy, I didn't little, do my oh research. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's, what it, just it, happened? Yeah. It's, um, hold, hold on. Before you get started, just give them your Chewy. Is that a good Chewy? That's not, it's, it's, it's all That's right. It's not good Chewy. It's not even the best one in the department, really. There's another guy in the department that has, has a better chew. Has a I better he chewy than I do, huh? and it's and he does the whole like arm thing too. It's like <laughs> <laughs> every time he does it, he does the arm thing. It's hilarious. Chewie never does that though, does he? No, does I know, but he's a beast. You yeah, know? he's just yeah. like so. He does. Yeah, this there arm there thing. was one movie he did it in. I think it, I don't know if it was Revenge <laughs> of the Sith. I'm thinking when he was waving his arms when they were trying to protect Yoda during Order 66. But anyway, back to your oh, question. Holy <laughs> no! Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Order 66, yeah. I just, uh, yeah. Whoa. No, so, yeah, how'd you get cut into the uh, Star no, Wars? So my, so my dad took me, I think it was the, I, I was young, obviously, in 77, 78. I think it was the re-release of Star Wars, which would have been late 77 or early 78. My dad took me. Uh, I was born in 73. Okay. So I was, I was four at some point when he took me, uh, either closer to four or closer to almost turning five. And I just... I just loved it. I just, I just, I just loved it. I don't it's really, movie. I don't really know why. And then, obviously, at that time, you know, there were toys. Star Wars came out with toys about six months, you know, after the movie hit. And I wish I would have known how valuable the toys were going to be. I should wish my parents would have known how valuable the toys were going to be. <laughs> then I would have had more stuff then. But yeah, I, uh, I I followed Star Wars, and you know I had a, a small collection when I was young, and then in '95, um, so original Star Wars toys kind of ended '85, '86, yeah, and then Star Wars kind of went dormant for about ten years, and then yeah. in '95 they re started re-releasing all the figures, and I had a son that was my oldest was born in December of '95, so I started collecting all Star Wars toys again, really for him, you know, like oh this is gonna be worth a mint. Mm -hmm. Those toys are not really worth a mint, but yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was fun. But what it led to was pretty bad addiction sometimes. But it was, it, it's been my release, if you will, from the hustle and bustle. That, you know, Star Wars is yeah. probably an answer of how I have hair and yeah, how I sure. have sanity. It's kind of my release. And about five or six years ago, I befriended a guy in town named Bill Harvat. And Bill recently started selling his collection. I actually bought some of his collection. But Bill and I met when he was working at Warner Enterprises, and now he does some video work. And, uh, you know, he's, he, he works somewhere else now here in town. But Bill's a huge – he actually has a Star Wars podcast. and uh, he, Star, he, Wars Star Wars only podcast? Oh, yeah. Holy yeah, absolutely. Cow. Does he have guests like uh, – <laughs> Dress up and yeah. stuff? Like no, he, not really. It's just he, him talking he, about He and Star a friend Wars. and his brother, and they talk Star Wars, and they talk about the movies and toys and collections. But So Bill Bill helped pique my interest in the vintage toys. Yeah. And I didn't have a lot of vintage, as I said earlier. I had a smaller collection when I was young. 
So I, in my collection of stuff, I went and pulled my vintage out, and it was probably 2014 or 15, maybe 15, 16. I can't remember exactly when. I need to go back and look. So I started getting back into collecting vintage, or maybe I started collecting vintage. I never really had. And it uh, has become kind of almost a way of life, a little bit to a degree. And I've joined a, a number of Facebook pages on uh, Star Wars groups, but there's one called the Imperial Commissary. It's a guy named Michael Havens. Uh, out of Nashville started and it's a collection of about 23,000 people from around the world and it's a Star Wars community and it's largely based on buying and selling toys but it's also about movie information and there are fundraisers we help raise money for you know different um, uh, groups in South Africa and we've sent toys there and if someone's kid gets sick you know we all send toys and 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 look if they're in the hospital I mean it's kind of a it's not just it's like, like a, a cult it, of us. It, 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 <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It's a giant fan club. Collective. Yeah. Collective. Collective. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is. And a cult. A cult. Come yeah. on. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's Manson. Is, We're not talking running. about Manson right now. Yeah. We can do that next podcast. But uh, Or Jim Jones or whoever you want to yeah. go with. Or Jeffrey. No, anyway, Jeffrey I'll, Dahmer. I'll yeah. stop. The I'll Jeffrey stop. Dahmer cult. Uh, but um, and it, 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 it's, you know, there, there's, I'm not a guy that's going to know every trivia. You know, I throw out Order 66, but that's a fairly common known thing. When, no, it's not. But, but it no. is, and no. that was the order that <laughs> that when the when the clone troopers they were programmed to kill all the Jedi's, and that's how the Jedi's died in in in, in Revenge of the Sith. So, okay. Um, and that that's why you only had Yoda and a few other Jedi's remaining. But I don't know all the characters' names. I don't do dress up as cosplay, but I think the toys are awesome. Uh, I have uh, a full collection of the original figures, and I'm working on two more because I have three boys, so they're each going to have their own. And I have entirely too many toys. I buy and sell, and I've started with a couple of other friends. We started a local collector group called the Echo Base Nebraska Club, and we're actually having a toy sale out at Warner Park on September 19th. It's wow. a free free parking, free entry. You guys should come out and see what it's like. It's yeah. morning of it September 19th. Cool, yeah, and we're going to have seven or eight booths, and I'm going to be selling not a lot of my collection, but a lot of my extras and doubles and things. But we'll also have G.I. Joe. We'll have He-Man, Transformers. He-Man. We'll, we'll have a whole I bunch of other that. stuff, too. And, and again, there's so many t- bad things in life, and there's so many addictions, and, you know, whether it's drugs, alcohol, whatever it might be. And this is something that I was doing with my kids, but now that they're – Seventh grade and junior, neither one of them think dad's cool with his toys anymore. <laughs> they'll, they'll come back around. They'll, co- they'll yeah, come, come back. back as yeah. my 24 hey, year old, almost 25 year old is. Oh, they will. They will. They'll yeah. appreciate it. And if they don't, you know, grandkids will at if some they point don't, in time. Screw them. No. <laughs> do, you have to, do you have to keep them in their box to like. Is it well? I, see, I, I have co- the four-year-old version where like, don't take it out of the box. I I I, I primarily collect loose. Um, <clears throat> um, so you can touch them, feel them, display them, whatever. I have run across some large collections of in the package that just recently, like last December till now, that I've purchased a couple and I've I've bought some of those and traded and sold to get some of the loose items I want. But I don't have a large collection of boxed or sure. car, it's called carded if the figures are still carded or boxed if the vehicles and accessories are still boxed in the package. I have probably maybe 20 or 30 carded,s but I know people that have. A thousand cards. Jeez. I know people wow. that have every I, every vehicle in the box, and I don't even have every vehicle loose. So my my stuff is is loose, and I don't I don't overly worry about. I like a good condition, but it doesn't have to be mint. Sure. You know, I'm not gonna go. I'd rather spend eighty bucks on a nice item that mint would be one fifty as long as I have it and I can clean it up and it has all the parts and everything. I'm I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Well, yeah. So, so, so when you start, sorry, good. when you started this, you're a or your collection started when you're a kid, it would have been hard to like not take it out of a box. Like to me, yeah. that would make no sense. The only items that I have from my childhood that are in the box and there are one, two, two, two carded figures and one, two, three, maybe four vehicles. My parents accidentally left them or forgot about them in the attic. So about, <laughs> this is supposed to be, this is an something. awesome story. So about 15 years ago, maybe 12, 12, 15 years ago, <clears throat> My mom found them, or dad, dad found them, and they gave them to me for Christmas. And you know, no those way. figures. One of the figures now is worth about three hundred bucks, and another's worth about six hundred. And then there's a vehicle that's worth about three hundred. And but to get them, you know, years later, number one, oh wow, it, it brings you back to your childhood. Sure. But and at that time, I really wasn't collecting at that time. 
but now it's like how appreciative am I? It's like wow, those you know those that's cool. Yeah, that's how really many cool. toys would you say you have? Too many. I more want, than a I thousand. Want a firm number. Oh yeah, more than a thousand individual. More oh, than a thousand. Easy. What does oh, the yeah. wife say? Yeah, but she well, what, what counts as a toy though? Like, are we talking like? A gun would be a toy. I think like a gun a has to go with the figure. That okay, would be one. Okay. That would a, be one. A, a gun, yeah. yeah, the figure and the <laughs> he gun. He doesn't and, want you to double in up. the helmet. You know, well, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, but they add up. They yeah. do, especially some of the later, uh, later figures, more accessories. Now, my wife is supportive. You is know, she, she she looks at me weird, and you know, she, she's like, "Look, you work hard. You know, as long as you're doing it reasonable." So, I always <laughs> wanted a Boba Fett carded figure, and Boba Fett's my figure, my guy, my character that I follow, and it is a lot of folks. But I, I I've just always liked it. Why is it? Why? I don't. I, like I, get, I, I think because he's before. so mysterious and you don't hear him speak a lot, and he does, he's he's only in the movies a very short period of time. True. And then he looks badass. He, he does. does. He, he does. does. He, he, he looks does. badass. So last year for Father's Day in '19, she said, "Okay, you can spend up to X dollars on a Boba Fett carded figure, and if you can, you know, find one that you like." And uh, she thought it'd take me like a month to find one. 48 hours later, I found one and bought it, and I had it a week later. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, she, she, you know, she encourages it. I mean, I could be out playing golf and spending two or 300 bucks on cart fees and, 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 and beers and drinks and dinner and all that, or I could sure. be at the bar, you know, spending whatever and, and having fun and interacting, or I could be interacting, investing in something that's safe mm -hmm. and has a value. And the right. other thing is this is to a degree, this is an investment as well. It's not just about having fun. That's a good point. It's, it is an investment. That's why I'm doing it for my kids. You know, I think, I think, I think one day, you know, they'll have, when they're, they're going to, they're going to get all of it when eventually. They're, yeah. yeah. When they're, they're gonna older get, and they're, you know, they're like, man, I need to make a couple bucks. They just sell that thing off. They could. <laughs> if, if they want to. Yeah. 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 I, I need to buy a 24 pack. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. goes Darth But it is nuts. Darth Vader gone. It is nuts. Some of the rare Star Wars figures, the guns, just the guns. Or 100 and 120 bucks each, like loose, like That's loose. Crazy. And some of the figures, figures can go for you know a couple hundred bucks. So you got a decent insurance policy for all this stuff. Uh, not enough. I, that's something <laughs> I do need to work on. <laughs> what, what's your display case look like? It's bad. It's just it's just some bookshelves that you would okay. buy at Walmart. You know, I've looked at some cases from IKEA and some other things, and my wife has encouraged me to just have something custom built. Uh, but cool. I, but I, it would be. But I'm I'm not there yet. I I I, I never do anything if I don't. Uh, either a know exactly what I want. I don't. I'm not just going to makeshift it, or b do it right. I'd rather wait and, and save up and do it right. But I need sure. to because because they get dusty. They, you know, because it's open air, it gets it gets dusty and the old plastic. You know, and mm -hmm. anyway, it's no. It's I hear you. First first world Star Wars problems. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> first world Star Wars problems. <laughs> so all right, we're on the topic of Star Wars. We're running out of time. What's your favorite Star Wars movie? Empire Strikes Back. Just hands down. It's not Empire question. Strikes Back. Yeah, hands down. What do you then, think of the new ones? Uh, like the new, mm, I get real mixed emotions on those. Yeah. Well, of of the new ones, Rogue One by far is the best. I think Rogue One that almost looks like it was made at the same time that A New Hope and Empire and Return were made. I think they did an amazing job with it. Uh, it's a very depressing story if you've seen it, because uh, all mm -hmm. the characters die. Spoiler, yeah, spoiler yeah. alert. Oh, uh, God, I was gonna watch that. <laughs> I <haven't> seen it. <laughs> but it's it it's well worth the watch. It's awesome. Solo. Eh, it was an okay I heard movie. So, uh, I've but, never seen that one. But it was funny. It was really funny. It shows how Han and Chewie met. Eh, you know what? It's worth the entertainment. You know, some yeah. people got all wrapped up. Oh, it's, it's, is it factually true? And oh my gosh, it's, it's not great. But it's fun. And that's yeah. what the, that that sometimes films are just meant to be stepbrothers, just meant to be stupid and fun. So yeah. you're not a purist. Necessarily. I'm not over the top purist. No, no, I'm, I'm really not. And then as far as the other, the new ones. You know, Force Awakens, uh, The Last Jedi, and then um, um, Sky, or The Rise of Skywalker. You know, I, I, The Force Awakens, I did like. I did. Um, the second one of the three was okay. And I personally liked The Rise of Skywalker. There were some people that did not. Um, I personally liked it. It was dark, kind of like Revenge of the Sith was dark. Um, I did not like Phantom Menace at all. I just didn't. I thought it was bad, but I thought it was marketing genius because at the time it came out in 99, you know, like my kid at the time was uh, four, and I took him to see it. And so it, it, it introduced a whole new generation yeah. to the Star Wars world. So I got the fact of why you had stupid Jar Jar Banks and you had a little kid <laughs> as the two primary characters, but I didn't like it, but it wasn't built for us. It right. was built at that time for people who were 5 to 15 at that time. Yeah. Sure. So, anyway, you may have been 15 in 99. May have been. Well, I was 
No, I was a little bit younger. Oh, but, even younger. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I'm showing my age here. <laughs> I was a freshman in high school. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, but so I mean, it was. Yeah. It was. It was. Yeah, we watched. I'm, I'm 47, so yeah. I, you know, I. Anyway. Yeah. Those are my Star Wars answers. Well, we got to wrap it up. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks, uh, Marty. Marty. Uh, be sure to support Thanks Ale for the Storm. Beer. Yeah, you bet. Support Ale Storm if you can. Uh, as soon as Storm Chasers are back, make sure you get to the ballpark. But in the meantime. Check out Union Soccer here in yeah, Omaha. Yeah. Uh, it's something both you and I need to go look at. Yeah. Um, UnionOmaha.com. That's the best place yeah. to look for um, uh, the schedule. Okay. And we do have tickets remaining for pretty much every game except for September 19th. So we love for people to come out. And then people ask always, how can you support the Omaha Storm Chasers because there's no games? It's going to the team store. Going to the team store from 11 to 2 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We've got a lot of great gear. I, I should have brought in. Uh, we have a new one that says this was not in the forecast 2020, of course. <laughs> that's great. Uh, yep. We've got a lot of great items like that, and that's really the only way you can support the Storm Chasers right now. So, you know, it, it, you know what? If you can't this year, we hope to see everybody back in 21. Awesome. Well, thanks for listening to the Brother Side Podcast. Thank you, Marty. Alex Pearson signing out. Justin Pearson. Thanks, guys.